Welcome to the Date Forever podcast. Keep your relationship fueled up with strategies discovered by couples and experts. Because at Fuel Collective, we believe better relationships will equal a better world. You are about to discover specific insights and tools that cost little or nothing to implement to help you date forever. And now, here are your hosts, a couple who always have a half-packed suitcase and a date night in the calendar, Sammy and Nathan Yeager. Hello and welcome to Date Forever. In today's episode, we're going to be chatting about our annual game plan and setting us up for success in this new year. So Sammy and I are going to share the process that we go through each year, which includes reviewing the past year, checking in on where you are now, setting goals for the next year, and then planning your year. But before we get into that, I just want to ask Sammy, what's been fueling you up this week? Mm, This past week, we've spent quite a bit of time in like humming household. We had a really big fuck up where we did a massive food shop, green grocer, fruit, veg, herbs, all the good stuff. Went to the butcher, got a heap of meat, and not just like meat for the fridge, but meat for the freezer. Like fully stocked fridge, fully stocked freezer, fully stocked pantry, probably good for two weeks. And then our meal kit delivery service was not cancelled for the week. So we ballsed up. And it was really annoying (laughs) because we'd already spent our food budget for the week and the following week. We'd already jiggled our things so that we knew that we'd spent twice as much money. We'd spent twice the budget. And then we were already in the red and then our meal kit was direct debited and we went further into the red. So I know that that's like an anti-fuel up. (laughs) But I guess the lesson in that was that we've now discussed how we can prevent that from happening again. So we're going to include a very specific moment in our Sunday chat um, when we're talking about the week ahead to make sure that we're making a conscious decision about whether or not we are or are not going to be receiving our meal kit delivery. Yeah. And I think it just kind of prompted an opportunity like we've been out of routine for probably three months yeah probably three or four months i think yeah i don't think we found our feet since we returned back from south australia like which was in mid-november we got back i think it just made me stop and prop and go okay normally our household runs on automation and we don't really have to think too much about grocery shopping and direct debits and bills and that sort of stuff and it all just kind of happens and we've got so much of our life on subscription for that humming household piece and this was like the first time in a while where one of the chains had got kinked and something had gone wrong. So it was a good opportunity to kind of like recheck in and go, well, is the meal kit delivery thing working for us? Are we enjoying a bit more autonomy? Like, are we spending the right amount of money on groceries? All that kind of stuff. So for me, the fuel up was the conversation that happened after the mistake. Yeah. So for me, my fuel up for this week is around fixing some of the problems that have been in our house for quite a long time. So a couple of the things that we've been meaning to get on top of for a while is getting a new couch um, and the coffee machine's been dying too and it's just a few other little bits and pieces like some of our cupboards have been like inaccessible. Way overstocked. Yeah, way overstocked. Every time you go to grab something out of the cupboard, you have to unpack the whole thing and then like stuff it back in there. So this week we just tackled a few of those little bits and pieces. So, So we managed to get a new couch and then also able to get a new coffee machine too. So thank you, Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, some of the cupboards and some of those sorts of things too. Just slowly been plodding through, doing kind of one bit at a time, working through each cupboard and cleaning out some of the clutter and then also just reorganizing it. So we've also got a trip to IKEA and Bunnings coming up this afternoon. Yeah. So just to get onto that next little step and to level up that little bit further. Yeah, it's kind of amazing, like, if you're stuck solving these day-to-day humming household kind of problems, like, it really is hard to step out of the little problems and into solving bigger ones. Yeah, it is. So, it's amazing how many of these small little things that aren't quite as functional as you want them to be, how much it slows you down. Yeah, and just keep tripping you up and just keep holding you back from actually tackling some of those big things. So, a couple of weeks ago, we shared a photo from our annual game plan in the Thriving Couples Collection collective Facebook group. If you're not already a member, come on over and join us. We have some cool chats and share 
different ideas and the things that we're kind of overcoming in our relationships. Nathan and I shared a picture from our annual game plan. This is something that we've been doing actively for maybe like... Three or four years yeah, probably. Yeah, I reckon at least four years. But obviously this process has evolved um, year on year and we shared a snap and quite a few people were like, oh, that would be really cool to get to know how you do that and what a great idea. Understand so, it a little bit deeper. So here we are. We're going to share a little bit about how we've planned our 2021. What we've found is that it's really handy to have a bit of a framework or an agenda to follow. So as we share this, I want you to kind of consider that, you know, you're in a shopping center and you're in a retail store and you've picked something up off of the rack and you're just going to try it on. You know, it might be a perfect fit. You might need to take it to the tailor and get a few alterations done. Or you might be able to walk out the store with it as Ready is. To Ready yeah. to go. Perfect fit. So just take what you like from this. Um, this is obviously how Nathan and I do it. There's no right. There's no wrong. This is just what works for us. And we want to share it. So the way that we normally do this is that we take a dedicated day to sit down together, get away from our normal environment and to run through this agenda and to really actively plan out our year. So in the past, we've done it like we booked out a room at the library once. We've yep. done it at a hotel. We've done it at a friend's house. We've done it at an Airbnb. We've done it in a park as well. Yeah. yeah. So get- maybe we have been doing it for like at least four or five years. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah. We've done it everywhere. Yeah. So we have a specific agenda that we kind of run through, and this has evolved over the last couple of years, but essentially we've had the same framework the whole way along. So we got married back in 2012, and we were young. We were in our early 20s. And the first few years of our marriage, like we'd already been together for five years when we got married, but sort of the first few years of our marriage, we kind of just like waded our way through the years and just kind of like took stuff as it came. We never really had, I guess, like a strategic plan or never had... A vision, um, really, for what... Yeah, what we were trying to get done or where we were really going. And I'm not even sure how this annual game plan first sort of came about, but I think it was the realisation that, like, what if we took some time to actively get on the same page for not just, like, the next week, but for, like, the year... You know, what were the things that we really wanted to do? Where did we want to go on holidays? When were we going to take a break? What were the big things that were going to happen in that year in terms of like family and friends events and things? And then it's kind of evolved to not just a logistics kind of meeting, but also a bit more of like a big vision. And where do we want to go? Not just this year, but in three years and five years and 10 years. And what can we do in this next 12 months to move us closer to that? So what we're going to share is the process that we went through. We normally do this in November. We tend to run our years in line with the seasons. So we would try and do this at the start of summer so that when we enter kind of 1st of January, we've already done all the planning and we know what we're kind of shooting for. And so there's a bit of overlap between our previous planning and, yeah, like you said, in January when we actually enter that new year. We're already aligned. We already know where we're going. But now that we've been doing this for four or five years now, I actually just can't imagine us not having it. Like, I can't even begin to think how we would have clarity of what the priorities were. Mm. And it just feels like it would be a constant conversation about what's coming up. So what we found is that by doing this, it really gives us clarity over what the big things are for the year that are coming up, what our priorities are for the year. And that really makes it clear, I guess, from a money perspective and also a time and energy perspective, what the priorities are, what we're going to focus on. And what we're really trying to achieve in this next 12 months. And then it's just a matter of checking in with those every now and then. Yeah. So as we said, we normally take a day to do this. We grab a big wall calendar uh, so that we can see the whole year in one view. We have used the same one, the Kiki K wall planner every year for the last five years. And they're stuck on top of each other. (laughs) One on top of the other uh, in our kitchen. So for this process to work, you need one of them. You need a big chunk of time, like a proper, either a day or two half days. I would really recommend a whole day. And for us, I think it does help being in a totally different environment. It stops Mm. us getting sucked into like, oh, I'll just quickly do this or I'll just quickly do that. And it, it really is about putting aside dedicated time. And doing it at a third space, it also means that you have to get organized. You have to book somewhere or you have to know where you're going and you have to have your snacks ready. and you know, Get all and, you your know, bits and pieces together. Yeah, so it kind of forces another layer of um, organization as well. 
Then you also need uh, some different colored markers for your whiteboard or for your annual plan. And then you need a heap of notepad paper and it helps to have last year's calendar with you as well. If you've yeah. got one. All right, let's get into the agenda. So we always start with the rear vision mirror, looking back on the previous year and how we did in that last year. So we all know that 2020 was a bit of a dumpster fire. <laughs> um, both Nath and I really didn't achieve very many of the goals that we had set out to. Some of them were really big, like we'd set out to launch the podcast. And here we are. But for me personally, there was a, a whole heap that I just, I hadn't even touched the edges of, whereas there was some that I had achieved and that was really awesome. So I, you know, I'd set myself a goal to read a certain number of books and complete a certain number of masterclass courses. Yeah. But then there were other ones like training at the gym 200 times and the gym had been closed for like six or eight weeks. And then I ended up traveling to South Australia for six, or eight weeks. And then yeah, it just kind of had fallen apart. So we go through the goals that we had set for the previous year. If you hadn't set any, that's totally fine. You can skip this step, but it's about having a conversation of the year that was. What was it that you had achieved? Yeah, so the goals are really just about checking in on what we were planning to achieve last year and whether we did achieve that or didn't achieve that. So one of my goals was a rock climbing goal that I really wanted to climb a level 22 wall. And I didn't achieve that, so I might actually roll this one over into this year. So next up, we chat about wins. This is really about what gets celebrated gets repeated. So we go through what were the big wins for this last year. So for us, some of the big things that happened were launching the podcast. Um, I got a new job. You did. You got a new car. Yeah, I landed a couple of consulting clients and gigs that I probably was stretching for, which was really awesome. We were able to work uh, away from home for six weeks. Yeah, that was a Totally big remote, um, which was something we had been hoping to do for a really long time. And we were able to validate that that was something we do want to do more of in the future. We hit 4,000 downloads on the podcast. Yeah, we did. So this is really just about acknowledging what you're able to achieve in this past 12 months. So we then flow on into contribution. So for us, contribution and making the world a better place is pretty important. So last year we kind of, we had best intentions. So I had personally started out doing Year of the Planet, which is a monthly kind of challenge. And each month you layer micro habits on top of one another. So it was like for the first month, trying to get rid of um, single use coffee cups and not ever getting stuck without your keep cup. Or if you are without your keep cup, you choose to eat in or go without. And removing things like plastic, single use, shopping bags and things like that. So it's about being really diligent and committing to that, not in an 80 or 90%, but like really going for it. But a big one that we introduced at home was that we started catching the water in our shower while the temperature is coming to the right temperature. Yeah. So we then just use that water to water all of our indoor plants and fill up the dog's bowl um, and sometimes wash down our balcony, which is water that we were using anyway. So that was kind of a habit that we introduced to help contribution. So next up is rowing. So what this is about is chatting about the things that have worked really well for us in this past year. So one of the things that worked really well for us was, was working from home and changing our spare bedroom into a dedicated office. This was like everybody else. <laughs> yeah, like, like everybody else. So initially it was Sammy's full-time office and then... Well, it was 50% well, bedroom, 50% yeah, office. <laughs> that's true. That's true. And so we went through a bit of an evolution to level that up to a two-person full-time office. And the working from home process worked really well for the two of us too. Yeah, and during this rowing sort of segment, we also talked about things like our food shopping and our banking and what are the daily or weekly or monthly kind of habits and behaviors, the processes that are like propping up our whole day-to-day -day life. What were the habits that we want to continue? What are the things that are like, if we keep rowing and we keep doing them with that cadence and that consistency, they're going to serve us really well. So then once we've talked about the things that are working really well... We chat about hurdles. So what hurdles did we face in this last year? What tripped us up? Yeah, Where what, did we hit the dirt? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did we really struggle with? Along with everybody else in 2020, uh, we yeah. did hit some hurdles and we did hit some obstacles. So, Even things like we had a couple of holidays and vacations that were booked that got cancelled. And when we cancelled them, we didn't replace them because it felt a bit ridiculous to be locked inside in our apartment at home 
to then rent an Airbnb somewhere else to then be locked in that Airbnb with no restaurants open and the MO really being stay home. So one of the biggest hurdles was that we both really needed a break and we didn't take one. Yeah. And some of those travel goals were some of our really big goals for the year too. So with us cancelling those plans, we weren't able to achieve our annual goals. And so I think it just tripped us up a little bit in feeling like we weren't actually able to achieve what we had set out for that year for 2020. And it did take a bit of a toll on us. Yeah, it really did. And I think the process of looking at the hurdles and acknowledging what were the challenges, it really did allow us to have a proper conversation about well, what did we learn from that, you know? And now we know that even if we have to compromise and we can't go overseas and we can't do all these amazing things, that we need to find a way to recharge. So that lesson may not have been learned if we hadn't unpacked a little bit more. Yeah. So the next thing we chat about is finance. So how did we go with money last year? What did we spend? What did we save? Did we invest as much as we wanted to? And why did we achieve that or not? So this segment, again, is with the focus of rear vision mirror. It's what has happened and what can we learn from that? So as an example, some of our income goals were quite different than what we were expecting. Some of our expenses were quite different than what we were expecting. Um, And I'm sure this is similar for lots of people living through 2020. So we just kind of recapped what was it that we had it set out to achieve and how far did we make it and what was the gap and do we know why that gap exists. So that's it for the rear vision mirror section. So after we've done that, we jump into doing a tank check. So this is really checking in with the eight fuel tanks and seeing where we're feeling about all these different areas of our life. These eight different fuel tanks are self, romantic relationship, relationships and network, humming household, career and business, wealth and lifestyle, the world, and the future. So these eight tanks are something that Nath and I have developed over the course of our relationship, and they've really only kind of come to life in the last kind of 12 months. We always had them as like categories or different areas, but what we've come to realize is that at any one given point in time, these different areas of our life are sitting, you know, to a degree between empty and full. So this is where the Fuel Collective and the Fueled Up Life methodology has come from. And something that we've been doing, and we've just kind of given it a name, but these different tanks, any single one of them can run empty for a period of time without it causing too much damage. But if they all start to get really empty, then you kind of start to run into problems. And we move through this tank check in a way that the problem isn't how empty or full each tank is Mm. it's more that we're checking whether or not we're in alignment with each other you know because if we both feel like one area of our life is really full and rocking and awesome that's great whereas if someone thinks it's empty and depleted and really needs some love and attention and the other person is like no 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 i thought this was freaking awesome (laughs) that's kind of where the problem comes from so it's that misalignment Yeah, so we've kind of developed this way of doing really quite a quick dashboard look at all of the different areas of our life and going, you know, how do you feel about yourself right now? How do I feel about myself, my hobbies, my interests? You know, myself as an individual and an entity outside of this relationship. You know, how does that feel? How's our romantic relationship? You know, are we feeling in sync? Are we feeling in love? Are we having enough sex? Is it the right kind of sex? Are we spending enough time together? Spending enough quality time together. Um, (laughs) Me going to sex first. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But we move through each of these tanks. So there's a few different ways that you can do this tank check. The first one is to take the quiz at fuelcollective.com.au forward slash quiz. And it takes you through the eight different tanks and asks you five questions to rank yourself of we do this really well to we do this poorly. And then it will give you a result. So that's a nice easy way that you can do it. Um, without having to do any math or have any extra thinking. Yeah. So the second way that you can check your fuel tanks is to download the PDF that is on the Fuel Collective website, which is fuelcollective.com.au forward slash freebies. So this PDF has the eight tanks for you to be able to rank, and it's really just a gut feel of ranking those tanks out of five. So then the third way, if you don't have access to download or you just want to do this quick and dirty, is to do this individually. So you Each of you don't share your numbers, but jot down the names of each of the eight different tanks and then just give yourself a gut feel. Like, does this feel like 
a zero, one, two, three, four, or five. And then once you've got your numbers, then you can swap details. So once you've got your numbers, then it's really a discussion about comparing those two numbers and seeing how aligned you are or how misaligned you might be. When there's a discrepancy, have that conversation about why there does feel to be that discrepancy. Like as an example, humming household, like I might have marked that as a one and Sammy might have marked that as a four. So trying to dig a little deeper into what that discrepancy was, while we're both feeling very differently about that fuel tank, and just trying to dig a little deeper to see what we can do to really refuel that tank and to both get aligned on how we're feeling about that. So as an example, for 2020, we were trapped inside for a lot of the year and we didn't have a lot of social interaction. So both of us were feeling quite disconnected from our individual um, hobbies and interests and friends because we'd spent quite a lot of time, obviously, inside and inside our relationship. <laughs> so that was something that we were able to sort of unpack and set some intention for how we might want to do that differently in 2021. So once you've worked through any of those discrepancies, then just have a look at the overall tank results and have a chat about what tanks you're feeling most confident about right now. What are the ones that are feeling really fueled up and which ones are the most concerning right now? Which ones are the lowest? So which ones probably need a bit more loving for the following year? So I think the other thing to talk about when you're looking at these overall tanks and that they're all at different kind of levels, they don't all have to be full. And that's not the aim of the game. You know, if you imagined that, um, you know, a pilot was on course to fly between destination A and destination B, not all of their gauges would be at maximum the entire flight. It's totally normal that things would fluctuate and move up and down, but it's about deciding which ones you want to be full most of the time or which ones you want to be fuller than they currently are. So the final piece of this tank check is then to check in with our values. So what we do is check in with our individual values and just understand whether they are still the highest things on our priorities list and whether we still feel in alignment with our values. So we've done heaps of work on our values, um, especially during Date With Destiny this year with Tony Robbins. Last year. Oh, well, last year. <laughs> yeah. And so we had a really solid idea of what we previously valued and then what our new values are going forward. So as an example, we had moved through a values exercise before and some of the things that were top of our list were travel and freedom and fun and growth, wholehearted living, love and connection and living in a state of abundance and actively choosing to live in that state. Yeah. So during our time um, at Date With Destiny, we had unpacked some of those things. We had moved them around a little bit because things like travel, probably not going to be quite as easy to fulfill our value of that. So if we could reframe how we feel about that and put it in a different order, all of a sudden it doesn't feel like you're missing out on anything. If you haven't been through a values exercise together as a couple, um, we have included one in our online course, Couple and Team. And again, you can grab all of the details on the website, fuelcollective.com.au. So taking a couple of minutes just to check back in on values is really just about redefining whether or not what's been important in the last year, whether or not that's still important. You know, it may be things like family has gone up the list or it may be the adventure has gone further up the list. It's really just about what are the pillars or the words or the things that are really going to be front and center for the upcoming year. So next up, we check in with our big vision. So we've done a Keith Abraham exercise in the past, which is to come up with our 100 lifetime goals. So if you want a little bit more detail on this, check out our podcast episode, How to Pick and Kick Goals with Keith Abraham. So as a result of doing that exercise, we have 100 goals which we want to achieve and work through together. So some of those might be one year goals, some of them might be 10 year goals, some of them might be way down in the lifetime. So if we take the opportunity to go back through that 100 lifetime goals list, see which ones we've actually been able to complete in the last year, which ones we can tick off, which ones are no longer serving our purpose or which we no longer want to achieve, and if there's any new goals which we want to add onto that list. So once we've had a look at those 100 lifetime goals, we then kind of zoom back in. So that was lifetime and then we zoom back into 10 years and go, okay, so the year will be 2031. What is it that we want to have achieved by then? Because we had done this exercise the year before, we had our, 20, uh, our, 20, our 2030 vision that we kind of were able to compare it to and see whether or not that still felt true. This kind of helps us just sense check a little bit more of like the horizon. Are we still both shooting to the 
same longer term place. In previous annual game plan days, we have had conversations where it's gone, well, we thought we wanted to go in that direction and now we're not so sure. And because we've had a space to have that conversation, neither of us have ever felt blindsided by like, oh, okay, like I didn't know that that had changed for you or that your intention had changed or your desire had changed. And it's carved out a really nice place for us to make sure that we're still shooting for the long term space. About 18 months ago, I went on a sailing trip to Croatia with some girlfriends. And one of the things about being in a yacht with a captain is that you see how they plan their route. And it's all about degrees. And something that I realized was that even if you're one degree off, if there's a second person who's also one degree off, but you're one degree off in separate directions, every kilometer that you travel, you end up further and further and further apart. So although it might be only one or two degrees, as you move further down the track, you get further and further apart. So the opportunity to kind of check in on our big vision and our 10 year helps us recalibrate and close that degree of gap if there is one. Yeah. So the two main ways that we can do this. So the easiest way is to complete the exercise with Keith Abraham around your 100 lifetime goals. And then it's to go through those goals and work out which ones you want to actually achieve within the next 10 years. And then what is it that needs to happen between now and those 10 years? And then specifically, what could you do in this next 12 months to help move the needle on some of those bigger things? What foundations can be laid? What are the baby steps? Is it a research thing? Is it a, you know, savings thing? Is it a conversation thing to help you start making traction on those bigger goals? If this is all a bit like crazy and like, whoa, we've never had a conversation like this before, don't even know where to start. Come and do the grand vision builder exercise that's included in Couple and Team. It'll talk you through the step-by-step at a much smoother pace than this podcast. (laughs) So one of the great things about doing the grand vision or the big vision, getting way up into like, what's our life going to look like? is it's actually really exciting to think about the house that we're going to live in, the places that we're going to travel, you know, the size of our family, the size and shape of our family. What things we're going to own, what things we're going to have achieved. Yeah, it is. It is. It's really exciting. Um, and it kind of helps stoke the fire in the belly a little bit. So one of the things that came out of our big vision sort of section this year was that the vision board that we have displayed in our home at the moment is probably not serving us because it has so much travel-related experiences on it. There's lots of visions of, you know, Chinchin Itza and the pyramids and going on safari and being in an overwater bungalow in the Maldives. Like, those are all incredible, amazing things that we absolutely want to do in our lifetime. But with the restrictions around international travel at the moment, the thing that we're looking at most often is actually quite disheartening so what we realized is that we need to do a smaller vision board that is more time sensitive for the next sort of one to three years so what we then want to be doing is moving from that grand vision or that 10-year vision down into a more tailored one-year vision so this is where we enter our goal setting section of our annual game plan so what you'll need to do is go back to the first section the rear vision mirror where you looked at the year gone by and pull out any goals or intentions you want to set based on the performance of last year. So Nathan and I sat separately and we individually brainstormed any potential goals for ourselves, but then also for the fuel tanks that we felt like needed a little bit more attention. So we each kind of brainstormed somewhere between 5 and 15 potential goals for each fuel tank, as well as a list for ourselves as individuals. Once we'd brainstormed all those ideas, we then swapped notes on each fuel tank and decided which goals are most important for that tank. So what goals would make the most impact in the coming year and what would move us towards that grand vision and what would move us towards achieving some of those 100 lifetime goals. So Nathan and I agreed on 21 goals for 2021 and we decided to spread them out across all of the tanks, whereas you may choose to focus on a select few. We wanted to make sure that the goals were phrased in a way that makes them binary and easy to know whether or not we did or didn't achieve it. So that's kind of the difference between like save more money and save $20,000. You can definitively say whether or not you did save $20,000, whereas save more money, what does that actually mean? So we phrase all of our goals as if they're completion statements. Like you can say, I did this. So I learned how to surf 
and had three surfing lessons. That is actually one of my goals for 2021. (laughs) So after we had both brainstormed our, you know, sort of five to 15 potential goals for each fuel tank, we then kind of chucked it around a little bit. We, you know, mixed up our list of 21. Some went on, some went off. We moved them up and down a little bit. Some of the ones felt a little bit uh, forced. And those were the ones that was like, well, are we setting a goal because it's really important to us or because we're trying to add something for the fuel tank? So there were a few things like we wanted to have a certain number of meat-free Mondays for the year, which, you know, it's something that we want to make more of a priority. But it was also something that we didn't want to just say eat less meat. We wanted to put a way that we could actually measure it and actually work towards it and plan for it. Um, You know, that we know that every, really, every other Monday we're going to do meat-free Monday. It's not to say we won't do more of them, but that's kind of like what we're shooting for. Yeah, and so make sure as well that when you are setting goals, that they are actually something that you can achieve, but they are also a bit of a stretch. So one of the lessons that we've learned from the last couple of years, so last year we had fitness goals around training 200 times, and we definitely didn't achieve that. And I think one of the reasons was because that there was some lifestyle factors, I guess, which got in the way, like COVID and gym shutting down, that made it a little bit, a little bit challenging to actually achieve that goal. So maybe try and broaden some of those goals out a little bit more. So instead of a train 200 times this year, I've actually gone for a step goal, something that's a bit more achievable in a bit broader sense that it doesn't necessarily mean you have to be dedicated to doing it in a specific way. So the final piece is focused a bit more around self. So this is to set yourself some individual annual goals as opposed to the couple goals which we have set earlier. So we took a little bit of time apart and, for example, I set myself some goals around the number of books that I would like to read this year, a couple of career goals that I'd really like to kick. I would really love to appear on a few other podcasts and other shows. So we took some time to think about the things that we want as individuals, not just as a team. So as you're doing that goal setting stage, it is really important to not just look at the tanks, but to go back to your rear vision mirror and look at the year in review and go, what were the problems that we had experienced? What were the things that we hadn't achieved? Why hadn't we achieved them? And what could be some potential goals that might help you move that forward in the upcoming year? So at some point in this annual game plan, hopefully you've taken a lunch break or a snack break, somewhere in the middle here, but you've done your rear vision mirror, you've had a look at the year that was, you've done your tank check and you've figured out where things are currently kind of sitting, Um, you've checked in with your values and then your big vision. Where is it that you're both desiring to go? And then you've set some goals, the specific things that you really want to get done either in this next 12 months or to contribute to your big 10-year vision. Yeah. So then we move into the calendar collab section. So this is about two people bringing their individual lives together into a real life year. So you'll need your annual wall calendar and your markers for the various different bits and pieces that we're going to put in the calendar. Don't skip this bit because you've done all of the work and it would be a shame to see it fall over. But stick with us and you'll be rewarded for it. So we utilize a theory called the pickle jar theory which is that if you've got rocks, pebbles, and sand, and you're trying to fit that into a jar, then you need to fit the rocks in first, the big stuff in first, then put it in the pebbles, which will filter in around the rocks, and then put the sand in last. So the sand is the small, less important stuff, and that will just kind of fit in around everything else and fill in the gaps. Whereas if you tried to put everything into the same size jar, the sand first, then the pebbles, then the rocks, it wouldn't all fit. And it's kind of this cheesy analogy that your life is exactly like that. You have 365 days, and if you spend all of your time doing the small, less important kind of stuff, then it turns out you don't have time for the big stuff or the time just kind of slips away. So as we move into this next section of planning out the actual time for the year, we kind of try and keep this methodology front of mind. Big stuff first, then the medium stuff, and then the little stuff can just fit in around it. Cool. So once you've got your calendar out in front of you, you want to sit down and run through these prompts together. So 
The first thing is the immovables. Um, so we mark in all of the public holidays so that you can see where all of the long weekends are, where the breaks are, and how that might fit around your work schedule or your social schedule. It might highlight opportunities where you want to go on holidays or you, where you might want to take a long weekend and you have no control, so get them in first. Yeah. So the next thing we add in is the house. So this is really looking at all the special birthdays and anniversaries. So mark all them on the calendar. And then also keep in mind when you might actually want to celebrate it if they happen to fall midweek. So third, we then do our network. What are the major events that are on the horizon? Again, these are things that we probably have no influence over their date. So sporting commitments, you know, whether or not it's grand final dates or whether or not it's big annual galas or awards nights for either of your individual hobbies or interests or clubs or communities or workplaces. Um, you know, are there any weddings, any big birthdays for family or friends? A couple of years ago, Nathan and I had like a 30th, a 60th, an 80th, and a couple of 21st all in the same year. And we don't live in the same state as our family. So it was good for us to have a sight and go, okay, well, what are we actually going to say yes to? What are we going to say no to? Because we couldn't really go to everything. No, we but if we'd been doing that in a reactive manner and we were just responding to the invites one by one as they came in, it might have been a little different and we may have made different choices. But because we had the hindsight, we had the big picture, we knew what was coming. Um, so this can feel a little bit overwhelming, but there is space for pruning back once we've got everything in. So make sure in this section that you're checking with individual work commitments too, that if there's any conferences or anything coming up and also other wish list events you might be wanting to attend. So is there some festivals? Is there a sporting event? So as an example, Nath really wants to go to the Bathurst 1000. It's been popped on our calendar every year for I reckon the last six years and five of them we've had weddings land on that weekend. And then last year it was COVID. So missed out again. But it's one of those events that we are endeavouring to get there and we have no control over when it is. So we want to know that if we are able to make it happen, that we can rather than it slipping through the gaps. So it's on the calendar for our awareness. So this is the same for any, you know, music festivals or like seasonal festivals or anything that's local to you that you go to every year. Pop them in the calendar here. So the next thing to schedule is this exact day next year. So block out your annual game plan, work out when you want to do it. So like we said earlier, we always try and do this at the end of November so that we're ready to go for the following year. So pick a date, whack it in the calendar. So this may not be for everybody, but for us, we do a look ahead. So we commit to having um, a few check-ins in between our annual game plan, and we do this in line with the seasons. So we normally just try and go for breakfast or brunch for a couple of hours, get out of the house, and we do an active check-in on how we're going with our game plan. So that's a date that we commit to and we pop it in the diary. That's not to say it won't change, but we know that it needs to happen. We find that having a space to chat logistics allows us to park those conversations to a dedicated spot rather than having like, oh, how are we going all day, every day? So the next thing we want to lock in is Hey Hey It's Vacay. So this is all about our holidays and our time away together. So what we do is have a look at the calendar, work out where there might be public holidays or how we can best utilize our leave. We're a big believer in structuring all of our holidays around those public holidays so that we can maximize our leave. And then working out those dates and blocking out that time, even if we don't know where we want to be going yet. So what we find when we do this is that we have a dedicated time to recharge and we can see when it's going to occur. So in 2020, we had two overseas trips booked, both of which obviously got cancelled and we didn't replace them. Um, we ended up cancelling our booked leave and we ended up working through and as part of our review process, as part of going through this annual game plan, we realized how detrimental that had been for both of us. You know, we really crawled towards the end of the year, both feeling absolutely depleted because we hadn't taken the breaks that we had set and intended for. So we find that even just having the vacation time or the long weekend time blocked in the calendar, it brings it on your awareness so that you can plan things and you can also look forward to it. So in this section, also make sure you're considering if there's any busy periods at work or things like that, which will stop you from being able to take leave at a certain time. So just keep all those things in mind while you're mapping out these dates. So the other thing that we do in this vacay sort of section is take a look at whether or not we want to take any trips 
separately. So we both are big fans of this. <laughs> we love as much as we love each other. We do love spending time with our um, friends in our own capacity. So we often sort of try to map out when um, Nath might take a boys trip and when I might take a girls trip um, or have a weekend away. All right. So your calendar might be looking pretty cluttered at the moment. There might be some double ups and overlaps and things like that. So next up, we get in the helicopter. We take that overall view, that overall snapshot of our whole calendar and work out what might need to change, what we might need to do a little differently, where we've got some space and what might be very cluttered. Yeah. So I learned this thing from Sarah Knight um, and her fuck budget methodology. And the idea goes that we all have a fixed amount of time, money and energy to spend our fucks on. So why would we want to spend those fucks on things that we don't really care about? So basically, now that you've got your calendar pretty full, it helps kind of frame up like, oh, shit, look at this year. It's already feeling quite full or it's already feeling overwhelmed or or there's gaps or whatever the thing might be. But when you've got the holistic view, when you've got the whole picture, it gets a lot easier to figure out what you need to say yes to and what you might need to pair back and say no to. So as you might know, we don't live in the same state as our family. So we often get visitors, which is really lovely. So a few years ago, we had this stage where we had, I think, six or seven weekends in a row where we had visitors coming from interstate. And it was so lovely to see everyone. But what we found is that we were very new to Sydney still, very new to our friendship groups we were trying to break into in Sydney. And we were turning down commitments to really build and nurture those relationships while we had these visitors coming from interstate. And it was super overwhelming for us. And it really threw us out of whack with a lot of our other fuel tanks. So our humming household was well out of the window. We were over budget. We were over fatigued. Com- fatigued. We were over committed massively for this six week period. And so this is really where this getting in the helicopter piece is important. You get to map out what's going on for the year, see where you're over committed, where you need to have a little break and what you might need to rearrange. Yeah, and are there any marathons that you need to prepare for? You know, is there a month where it's like, go, 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 go? And you can actually see that coming up to it and you can better prepare. So if you haven't read Sarah's The Life-Changing Magic of Not Giving a Fuck, I'd really recommend it. But if you're short on time, she's also got a TED Talk, which sums it up really nicely. And it's really that idea of like, you are in control of your time, your money and your resources. How do you want to spend it? So that's it. That was the final thing to go on your calendar. So now that you've done all this work, we want to be sending this straight to the pool room. Display this somewhere. Put this up somewhere where you're going to see it every day. And if you're a more forgetful person like I am, it's really great having it somewhere visible that I can check in with it daily. And it stops you asking me, what are we doing this weekend? (laughs) It does. Yeah. And then the final step is to digitize it. So it's all great to have the calendar up on the wall where you can see it while you're at home. But we're when, not always at home. No, we're not well, always Well, in 2020, at home. we were always <laughs> at home. But in the future, we hope that we aren't always at home. No. So what we do is we both have Google calendars, which we share with each other so that we can see what we've got going on at any one time. So make sure that all of those commitments, which you now just put on your wall calendar, that they get transferred across into a digital ecosystem. Having these Google calendars is really important for both of us to be able to commit to things on the fly, essentially. So we can jump into the calendars, see what we've both got going on, make commitments if we're free or be able to reschedule something if we're already committed for a certain date. Okay, we are at the part of the annual game plan. Money, money, money. (laughs) So you've set out all of these amazing things that you want to do for the year and goals that you've probably set. Some of them probably have some financial commitment with them. So what Nathan and I do is take a minute to look at our overall budget. So we look at how much is it currently costing us to run our household every month from rent, bills, car, phones, internet, all of the things. And we take a snapshot of what that amount is. Um, And then we take a look at our savings goals um, and whether or not we are where we want to be. And if we're not, what is it that we need to do to change that? How much would we need to save additional each week or month or fortnight to make that happen? 
this year we also set a stretch savings goal because we won't be traveling and ordinarily we would be spending some cash jumping overseas which we don't think we'll get to do this year Mm. so we take some time to take a look at the things that are gonna cost money and also anything extra that's out of the kind of ordinary like for us this year we know that we want to get a new couch we want to get a new mattress we would love to get an animal stick dyson vacuum cleaner for our beagle who's molts everywhere we've got a snow trip that we would really like to take we would love to get some new sheets and some new linen so there's a few different things that are not in our normal budget Um, so we just kind of made a big long list of all of the things and then also the interstate travel that we're planning to do to visit our family and we came up with a bit of a budget So this exercise helped us check in to see whether what we actually wanted to achieve this year was realistic or not from a financial perspective. So if you've not done something like this before, it may take you a little while to gather all of the information. Um, But once you've got the information and you're looking at it year on year on year, it gets easier and it gets faster. Like for us, it helps us really understand where we are and where we're going. And that is your annual game plan. So there's a few things that we do post meeting or post game plan day and that is to create a goal board Um, we do this in canva and i'll link the template at the fuelcollective.com.au forward slash freebies we also set up a scoreboard or a scorecard for all of the goals that um, had multiple milestones so for example we set a savings goal but there's going to be some smaller increments that we can celebrate along the way. So we set up a scorecard that allows us to track, you know, the number of meat-free Mondays that we've had so far and how many we've got to go. Basically, I live and breathe the methodology that what gets measured gets managed. And you really can't improve anything if you don't have the data to tell you. You know, we all love seeing how many number of steps we've taken. And this is kind of that same thing. We want to be able to see progress progress helps us feel like we're getting somewhere um, as opposed to getting to the end of the year and being like oh fuck we didn't achieve anything that we set out to because we didn't track it so we have a physical scorecard which we've stuck up in our home on our entry doorways so that we can see it every time that we leave our house but we also then transfer that across into trello too so that if we're doing any of our checkup meetings out on the run or out at a cafe or somewhere that we can check in with our annual goals on the fly and that's it That's the annual game plan. It normally takes us a day. Sometimes it takes us two days, um, depending on if we know that we're going to go really deep into restructuring of finance or if we're going to go really deep into doing a separate values exercise or anything like that. But now that we've got quite good at it, it does take us about a day. And then we like to celebrate. We normally go out for dinner afterwards or do something lovely, have cocktails or something like that. Because you should be rewarded. For us, this process of annual game planning is really about being proactive and living a life by design and that we are in control of the destiny and that it's not happening to us. We're creating it. So I can't recommend this enough. You don't have to be in a couple to do this. This annual game plan is really about setting intentions for yourself and for your life and what you want to get done. You know, and one day out of 365 is a pretty small ask. What's possibly more important than your life? So we have bundled up all of the notes, all of the questions, the agenda, the calendar downloadable, uh, all of the bits and pieces. You can find them on www.fuelcollective.com.au forward slash freebies. Jump to the annual game plan agenda and everything is there for you. So we would love to see if you go ahead and do this, come and join us in Thriving Couples Collective and share some pictures, show us your snacks. Um, show us your location, show us your wall planner. We would love to see you in action. So thanks for sticking with us. Nay, of that annual game plan, we set 21 pretty big goals. Yep. What are you most excited about? Uh, so I'm most excited about investing in some shares and also just hitting my 8,000 step average. Average. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Um, There are a few of the goals that we set that I am pretty excited about. Uh, They're a little bit adulty. And by that, I mean like getting the cleaning of our apartment outsourced. 
I am really thrilled that we're making that a priority because I hate it. Um, I'm really looking forward to working, um, remotely again this year. And I mean, remotely in the sense of like, not from our office. Um, I know that we work like obviously from home a lot of the time, but that's quite different than actively being on the road, you know, working away. I'm also really looking forward to some of the dates that we've got intention for this year. You know, I really like that we've made that a priority and made that commitment to each other. Um, and then one of the other really big ones that I'm excited about is just probably our contribution that we're making that quite focal. Just the little things like, you know, if we can make meat free Mondays just a habit and a routine, um, I feel like there's a lot of flow on effects from that too. So mm. it's just a small step and I'm very much for us replacing things rather than removing. Hey, so we hope that you've enjoyed uh, this annual game plan. We know this episode's been a little bit different than usual, but we would love your feedback. Hit us up either in the Thriving Couples Collective Facebook group, and we would love you all to come and join us there. Or we are both always available on email. So sammy at fuelcollective.com.au or nathan at fuelcollective.com.au. We always love to hear from you and what you're enjoying, what's working, and we love to see where you're listening from. So good luck for your very own annual game plan day. So as you know, at Fuel Collective, we believe that better relationships equal a better world. So to say thank you, and in the spirit of annual planning, we have provided a school uniform to a student in Cambodia for 12 months. So the education is free at this school, but the students need to have a school uniform to be able to attend, and many families aren't able to afford a school uniform. So this project is supported by Trailblazers Foundation. And this has been possible via our partnership with Buy One, Give One. So thank you so much for making this possible. Thanks heaps for joining us. If you love what we're doing here and want more, subscribe to the Date Forever podcast to make sure you never miss an app. Come and hang out with us and other awesome couples who are fueling up their relationships in the Thriving Couples Collective Facebook group. Or check us out at fuelcollective.com.au. Until next time, keep on dating. Because better relationships equal a better world.